Mahai Riorio. Can I leave you with one Simi phrase? I'm from the Simi tribe, so I want to just leave you with this simple word, okay? A simple phrase, rather. Al Hoshe. Al Hoshe. Amazing. That's praise the Lord, okay? I want to turn to your neighbor, a person sitting next to you, and say, I'm glad I'm sitting next to you. And again, turn to the other person, all right? Turn to the other person and say, you look amazing. Again, anywhere, okay? Turn it to, okay, so it's your wish now, but I want to turn to your person sitting next to you and say, you smell good today. Respected pastor, elders, beloved members of the Tunkle Baptist Church, Bangalore. Greetings from the Naga Christian Fellowship, Bangalore, and we are so thankful. Thankful to God, first and foremost to God for this opportunity. But also I want to say thank you to all of you for your warm hospitality. I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas. Is that okay? Merry Christmas. So the topic we are looking at this morning is the love of God. The love of God. You see, Christmas is all about the love of God. And we can celebrate Christmas without thinking about, without talking about, but in, in this case, without preaching about the love of God. So the topic this morning is the love of God. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, we give you praise this morning for who you are. God, that you are the love. That is who you are, and uh, we just want to say thank you for that. We thank you, Father, for your demonstrating the love for us through your Son, Jesus Christ. So this morning, as we spend time delving into your word, help us to not just believe this truth, but to delight in it. And may each one of us who listen to your word, may we experience it. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you have your Bibles, which you can grab them and turn to 1 John chapter 4, our scripture reader, uh, Miss Lamb, has clearly read to us. Uh, she read uh, 9 and 10, but uh, I want to again read this passage from verse 7. Uh, till verse 12. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 through 12. The word of God says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a turning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. In this passage, 1 John chapter 4 verse 9 through 12, John tells us about the love of God. He speaks about the love of God and he tells us that God is love. And he shows us how God demonstrated his love. And then he tells us, how then should we live in the light of those truths that God is love and that God has demonstrated his love? Now, the Greek word that John used in this passage to describe God's love is agape. Now, there are different types of love, but John uses the word agape. And agape is referred to a divine, a spiritual 
and sacrificial love. Agape speaks of a love that seeks to give without expecting anything in return. Agape also speaks about love that seeks the highest good of the object that is loved. And Agape also speaks about the love that loves and lovely and unworthy. So that's Agape. You see, we humans, we have this tendency to love what is lovely. But God does the opposite. God loves the unlovely, the unworthy. And God loves sacrificially giving his all. That's, that's agape love, referring to God's type of love. So let's look at the first point in verse 7 and verse 8. If you have your Bibles, you may just follow along. Verse 7 and verse 8. John says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. And he says, who, Everyone who loves God has been born, who loves has been born of God, and God knows God. In verse 8, he said, Whoever does not love God does not know God because God is love. He used the word God is love. So the first thing John tells us, or rather telling us in this passage, is the very nature of God. And, it's that, and, and that is, God is love. God is love. And it's who, that's who he is. And so in verse 7, John says, love comes from God. But in verse 8, he says, God is love. So in a sense, what John is telling us is, is that God is, he is the source of love. But God is not just the source of love. He says God is love itself. He is love itself. His nature itself is love. In a sense, John is saying that love is not something that God does or it's not just something or just one part of his attributes of who he is, but God, he, he is love. Everything about God is love. So he is the source. But the secondly, John tells us that God is love. Everything about God is love. In other words, what John is saying is whatever God does, he does, he does, uh, uh, he, he does in, 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 a, in a nature that is loving. So, so God's nature doesn't change. So, so, in, in times, you know, in, in certain times, sometimes God, see, for example, for us humans, we love, our love is unconditional. Based on, for example, if you love me, I love you. But God's love is unconditional in, in a sense that he does not change. And so God is first and foremost, he's the source, but most importantly, he is love. That's what John says, God is love. Now, how can we say that God is love? Or rather, how can God be love in his very nature? Well, I think it has to do with his very being. That God is triune. As Christians, we, we believe in the doctrine of Trinity. Doctrine of Trinity. And the doctrine of Trinity is simply this. That God, we believe in, in one God. Right? We believe in one God, a loving and a true God. But, but eternally, but you know, in, uh, uh, God exists in three persons. Father, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I think this is, it's so important for us to understand this concept. Because the only way God can be love is his very nature, is by, by being triune. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Why I want to tell you this? Well, in order to, for him, for God to be love, he had to love. If not, if he doesn't love, then he cannot be love. And so if he had to love, then there has to be someone that he has love for eternity. Because love, when we talk about love, love by, by definition uh, requires another person. You need someone to express that love. So in essence, our God exists in three persons, and each person of the Trinity loves each other in perfection, other perfectly. And so in essence, the Father's love as the Son and the Holy Spirit. 
the son loves the father and the holy spirit and the holy spirit loves the father and the son there is this perfect mutual loving community and so love originates in god he is the source of love but not only he is the source of love but god he is love itself he is love by his very nature love is not something that he just does god is love now you may ask yourself well how can i you know be sure that god loves me it is something that you know to say that god is loving god is he's by nature he's loving but how do and i how you and i do you and i know that god loves me personally god loves you and i and he cares about me in verse 9 through 10 john gives us that answer and he says in verse 9 through 10 john says this is how god showed his love amongst us and he says he sent his only son into the world that we might live through him this is love not that we love god but he loved us and he sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sin so john began this passage by explaining the very nature of who god is that god is love and now he gives us the proof of god's love the love that god possesses and he gives us the proof and he 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 says that god's love is historic historic in a sense that the love of god was made known to us in human history god became man entered into this world history and history in a sense that this love that this manifestation of god's love is the greatest demonstration of god's love that human being have uh, ever experienced or will ever experience and john tells us that god showed his love by giving his son his own beloved or begotten son for us and john shares with us in this passage two very different uh, but very related reasons for why god sent his son for us in verse 9 he says god sent his son so that you might live through him meaning so that we may have eternal life so that we might spend eternity with god And then in verse 10 he says God sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sin. And those two two things are related because in order for us to experience the eternal life in order for us to to experience or spend time with God eternally we need the atoning sacrifice of God that is Christ dying for us on the cross for our sins. And I think if you remember earlier I mentioned that everything that God does is loving because God is love. And that is true. But we also have to remember that God 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 you know uh, uh, God is loving doesn't mean that God excuses sin, right? And this part is very important. God had sin. He cannot bear sin. We know our God, we all we know and we understand we sing and we talk about God, right? And God we sing, God you are holy. God is omnipotent, all powerful. He is holy. God is just. If that is the case, then God is a God God's love is holy. But also God love is just. And therefore, he must punish sin. God hates sin. And I think yet this is why cross the cross narrative is very beautiful because it's on the cross that God demonstrated his love for us but also it's on the cross that our sin you know God Jesus bore our sin on the cross our sin uh you know God punished our sins on the cross and the result of that is rather than us receiving the punishment from God because of our sin it's now Jesus the son of God he stood up he took our place and he took up sin and the wrath of God upon himself the punishment for our sins so he is the atoning sacrifice meaning God removed our guilt our sin and our shame and he God 
Jesus satisfied the wrath of God on our behalf. But also because it is at this cross that Christ, in, of Christ that we see the love of God is in stark contrast. The love of God, it shows us that the love of God is different kind to the love that we experience in the world, that we share amongst us. Because earlier I told you that as humans, we tend to love what is lovely. We tend to love, you know, what is worthy. When we say we love someone, most likely it is because there, there was something in that other person that attracts us to, to them, to love them. That can be physically, physical appearance. It could be their wealth. It could also be their status, their power, and their standing in the society. Those are the stuffs that attracts us and compels us also to love them. We find them worthy of our love, and so we love. But the irony is that God demonstrated the greatest love of form, uh, form of love by actually loving the unlovely. That's the irony. We love the lovely and worthy. God loves the unlovely and unworthy. That's the difference. And I guess all of us here, we are unworthy. We are unlovely. We were sinners and we are by nature. And therefore we deserve the wrath of God. And there was nothing in us that attracted God. But God demonstrated his love for us in that while we were still sinners, the Bible says, and he died for us. And I love someone said this, you know, you see, someone said, God does not love a future version of who you are. I want to repeat. God does not love a future version of who you are. He loved you when you were at your worst. I think that is good news for all of us. And that is good news for us today because if God loved us when we were unlovely, if God loved us when we were his enemies and when we sinned against him, then we can be rest assured that God will continue to love us because God is love and therefore his love is limitless. You see, all of us, we are not faithful all the time. We fall and falter at times. We fall at times. We sin against God through our words and deeds and our actions. But God still loves us. God still loves you. His love for you doesn't change. And therefore, his love will remain steadfast on your good days and on your worst days. But there is a condition applied. All we have to do is come to him in repentance and seek forgiveness. And we confess our sins and turn to him and that's the good news. That's, that's what the love of God does to each one of us. Is that after all the mess that we create, however dirty and sinful that we are, God still loves us because God is love. That's who he is. So now we have seen how, God, how God's love is. That is, is sacrificial. And it's because God is love itself. And God's love never changes and he loves us just the way we are, but also he wants us to come to him and confess our sins and repentance and accept him and experience his love. But also God demonstrated his love in a historic way in that God sent his son to show us that he really loved us. And now, based on those above truths, John now motivates us, he moves further and he motivates us to love one another. The motivation that John gives based on those two truths, he says, to love one another. In verse 11, verse 12, John says, Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. But if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. When John used the word love, he uses the same word agape. And mind you, agape means it's a sacrificial, it's a God and sacrificial kind of love. 
love that loves the unlovingly and lovely love that loves the unworthy love that loves without expecting anything in return that's god's kind of love and now john tells us you have that kind god kind of love why because you have received that god kind of love and therefore you give that god kind of love to one another in verse 12 john makes it a point to say no one has seen god and he says if we love one another the closest thing to see god is by the love we have for one another no one has seen god but john says if you want to see god right you love one another because god is love i think this is the intent of god's love there's so many aspects you know there's so many things to talk about when it comes to the love of god but i think this is the intent of god's love is that god loves us but god doesn't want us to stop his love with us but god wants us or rather john tells us that it was supposed to flow through us as god's love overflowed to us through his son jesus christ now then as recipients of that amazing love god wants us that love to overflow to us onto others so as i close this morning i want to just remind all of us that christmas is all about the love of god the bible tells us for god so loved the world john 3:16 shall we read recite this together john 3:16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life amen i mean christmas season we receive gifts and we we give gifts i received a lot of good gifts and i'm sure you are as well but all for all the gifts that you have received and you'll be getting this christmas the greatest gift you could ever give get is the gift of god's love God's love God's loving sending his son Jesus to die in your in your place on the cross and then raising him from the dead ever living that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved the bible says but you must accept that gift by faith this gift doesn't come automatically At Christmas you and I people give you give gifts and we receive gifts and when we receive gifts people expects us to open it up and that's what God has done he has given you a gift God sent his only son to die on the cross so that you and I can be forgiven and because God loves us so much He not only give us his is this amazing gift but he wants us to open this gift how do we open that we open by opening our heart and invite him, inviting him to come into our hearts and so christmas is all about the love of god the love of god greater far than tongue or pain could ever tell And so if you don't know that love that kind of love God's love I want to encourage all of us my dear brothers and sisters young and old everyone get it here this morning just encourage all of us this morning that this Christmas that all of us we would humble ourselves before the presence of God and say God forgive us forgive my sins be born in my heart in my life in my family i surrender to you my life and i receive the greatest gift of all the gift of your son jesus christ that is amazing because this gift is not just for here and now but it's throughout eternity and because of this we have access to heaven and if we don't have that where will we be and so friends this is a serious matter we always hear about god's love we talk about god's love 
But sometimes it's difficult to really grasp and understand and truly know that God, yes, He loves the world, but do does God really love me? This morning, the Word of God is saying that God, He loves you. He knows you by name, and therefore He loves every single one of you. And I believe that all of us, we would spend Christmas this year differently. And that from now on, we would really, you know, bask on this love of God and we would live our life for Him. God bless you all. Thank you.